Mm. Hello and welcome to the Carp Blue Podcast, our match preview slash inside Bodymore show for Aston Villa versus Fulham at the weekend, or I should say Fulham versus Aston Villa, as it is away, one of my bugbears in football, that John. Uh, how's things, mate? You okay? Yeah, sound. Looking forward to um, Saturday, obviously, but then lots of games coming up until the next international break, which is an absolute joke because um, England are going to be playing games with a manager who they're, they're not going to have. Obviously, yeah. really it feels so bizarre, but uh, I'm not going to be talking about England or anything like that. Or whatever. Yeah, looking forward to Saturday. Difficult game against Fulham, but one where I think we're all probably feeling a bit more um, kind of bright, or at least I'm feeling much more brighter about because of the injury news, which we'll get on to. Nice, happy press conference, basically. <laughs> Just before we start, obviously this isn't live. We're we're in a massive rush this evening, so we're doing it as a pre-record. We'll throw it out at some point on Friday evening, so we won't talk about any embargo stuff. Uh, just before we came on, John, you were munching on something, and it's still kind of in your mouth, in your teeth. What? what, what oh, sorry. It? You can probably guess then. It's um, proper. Oh, corn. nice. Yeah, my, mate, I haven't eaten well today at all. Uh, busy going to the presser, and then they had popcorn there. Um, they have like different brands of stuff now. They had like Walker's crisps and whatever. They still have the cookies and muffins as well. So, yeah, really good uh, spread. So, sorry, I mean I shouldn't be eating this. I am on a podcast. I will stop. I'm gonna put it over there. This podcast is not sponsored by Proper Corn or Walker's Chris, but it is sponsored by NordVPN. If you want the best discount code available for your two-year plan, there's a link in the description down below. Uh, somebody, we did like a little survey recently of like podcast feedback, and somebody said, I had a section of like, what would you like to see more of? Someone said, more adjectives to, to describe the discount code. <laughs> so, um, scrumptious is today's one. Enjoy a scrumptious discount code in the description down below. It's going to be like more sponsors. <laughs> like, <laughs> I like those shirts in South America. It's just like a billboard. <laughs> yeah. What I really want for my villa podcast is more advertisements. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so right, let's talk. Let's talk about the. I mean, you kind of touched on the press as an overall vibe. So, let's move on to the second kind of throwing up card thing that we do injury update. A lot to discuss, but in a very, very positive way, which is really nice. That makes it there isn't much to discuss, but there's a lot of yeah. names, is the point, I suppose. Um, I saw your little Twitter video, I didn't watch it all because it was seven and a half minutes <laughs> long. Yeah, like, come right. on, uh, on <laughs> I've been I'm very busy today, which we'll touch on later. But the first part was about the injuries and the big smile on your face as you read off about, I don't know, 10 players who are fit and available. Do you want to do that again? Yeah. Uh, I can't remember them now. No, I think it's seven players who are fit who were either doubts or whatever. So um, I think firstly, we'll start with Kamara and Mings, obviously long injuries, but they are available to be in the squad, whether they will or won't be. I don't know. Uh, we'll find out. Obviously, we can't rely on those two players yet, mm. and there's a long way for them to go. Um, I did ask Emery in the embargo section about them and kind of their progress. Where are you know? He didn't say too much, but uh, yeah, that'll be in the morning, Saturday morning. I should have some quotes about that somewhere. But essentially, they're not obviously ready to. As we all, know. they're not going to start tomorrow. Obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Um, they may be in the squad, though, or they can be in the squad if Emery wants them to be. But then I think the main ones, obviously, Esri Konza, fit and available, uh, as is Amadou Anana, John McGinn, Jacob Ramsey and Jaden Philogene. No more kind of fresh concerns. Um, mm. Robin Olsen, though, is the only one. So it's not a fully fit squad, um, but it's near as damn it. Fully <laughs> fit squad, so. Yeah, Robin Olsen's just training at the moment, uh, not like fully, but I don't actually know what the issue was with him at the start of the season, but he's getting better. It's crazy, isn't it, that we've come, obviously, we've signed players to help with squad depth. But if you look at the back end of last season, absolutely ravaged by injuries that were you know, struggling to put a bench together effectively. Whereas in these players coming back, it's absolutely fantastic news for the likes of a Concer or a McGinn or a Bailey, who are, or Ramsey even, players that are like could start the game. But there'll be some players in there, probably Mings and, and Kamara potentially, that some of these players aren't going to make the bench because there just isn't room for them. Well, this is what I was uh, going through with um, <laughs> with Jacob after the press conference. If I quickly bring up the Villa United bench, uh, one sec, here it is. You're basically adding five players to that team. People can do this yeah. themselves at home if they like. Just have a look at the bench. Because um, you're adding uh, McGinn, Kamara. JJ. G- yeah, JJ and Anana, five players. Yeah. So if you look at the five or the, or the whole bench, let's say, if I just list off five names here, Caden Young, Silks Winkles, Lamo Bogard, Nedeljkovic, then you've got Joe Gauchy, who was the only goalkeeper. So then it's going to then be one of Matson, Buendia, Duran and Carlos. And by the yeah. way, Nedeljkovic is obviously a first-team player. So is Bogard. So if we have a full complement of players in the squad, 
it's what like three first team players who would miss out in the squad, which is pretty crazy. Um, what I would say is that this isn't going to happen every week. This may be the only week oh, yeah. for the rest of Unai Emery's tenure that we have a full <laughs> set of players apart from Robin Olsen. Um, but obviously, yeah, positive. But at the same time, you're kind of thinking, well, actually, this is competition for places in the squad, <laughs> not necessarily yeah. the starting eleven. which, as you said, even like two, three weeks ago, we were thinking, oh, all of a sudden, we're kind of down to the bare bones at right back already or on the wing. So, it, you know, things change rapidly in football, but going into the Fulham match, at least, we should have a very fit and healthy team. The only thing I would say is McGinn has just come back from hamstring injury. Kamara and Mings aren't ready yet. Anana hasn't played for a couple of, you know, they're not going to be fully up to speed, but yeah. they're there. So. Yeah, and, and to have them as options, even if Anana comes on for 20 minutes and that helps hold on to a lead or change the game, whatever, that, that is what their role is in the short term, whilst maybe Anana starts now against Palace to get him back up to speed, or maybe Kamara and Mings even get minutes against Palace. Let's do, I'm going to have to do kind of an apology, kind of a, but here's something good, bit bit bad news, bit, good, bit of good news. Uh, opposition view sadly doesn't exist once again and I feel quite bad actually like I probably shouldn't t- you know, be this deep about it but that's a part of the show that I really want to keep in the show and I've probably done it like twice this season in the seven or eight league games that we've done which is it's just not good enough it's not the standard I expect of myself um <laughs> partly because I've been ill again I was off yesterday uh, as an annual leave day and today the good news part away from match day let's discuss something different I was filming the second episode John of the Villa Social uh, so that's in the bag now so that's what I've been doing today which I've not been able to work on Fulham video which is why I've not done this as a live stream so I've literally been home about 10 minutes and John said are you free now we need to film and I was like ah damn it okay yes yes we can do it the Villa Social episode 2 is in the bag as I've said uh, but it's coming out on Thursday, the 24th of October. That is the two-year anniversary of Unai Emery, uh, the, the brilliant Unai Emery joining this illustrious football club. Um, we did a video on the 24th of October, 2022. Like, Emery's been announced. Wow, oh, this is mad. Um, and I can't remember what we did last year. We must have done something like the first year of Unai, like, how's he done? We must have done something. Um, but it felt right that the original plan was always to film the Villa Social on this date, and it was going to go out on... Wednesday uh, after Bologna and we were just mm. going to you know, do something I, I don't know we didn't even have a topic planned or anything uh, last week and then I realised that the date was going to be uh, the second year of Unai perfect perfect scenario the Villa Social can now be us gushing about Unai Emery which is basically what I Ty Bracey James Rushton Max Stokes and Dan Bardell did for about an hour an hour and a half and we had a good old chinwag about the best goal that we've scored in the Emory era, the best game, the best result, the best moment, that kind of stuff. Um, and just had a, a good old chat about the future as well and, and what that might look like under Unai. So that's been filmed today. It's very, very good, if I do say so myself. I really enjoyed the filming process. Uh, obviously, I've not looked back on it yet to edit it together, um, but that will be out on Thursday, the 24th. Uh, so busy week next week, Q&A, Bologna post-match, preview for Bournemouth, post-match for Bournemouth, and sandwiched in between those will be the uh, the Unai Emery special, so keep an eye or an ear out for that one. <laughs> yeah, I remember a couple of weeks ago we were thinking about um, about that specifically. I think I brought it up in one of our little meetings that we were having, and it was like, oh, what do we do? And then that fell perfectly, so it's also yeah. nice to get, well, the whole point of the Villa Social was, uh, you, you'll probably say it better than me, Danny, to get different voices on it as well, because if we talk about two years of Unai, we are going to talk about what we're talking about every other week, pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, kind of perfect opportunity to to do that one. Back to Fulham then. We're going to do a predicted 11, which actually has a bit of fun to it, rather than just going, oh, same team as last time, uh, because of the players that are returning. So yeah. I've not given this any thought at all, and I will in a second, but do you want to run me through a possible 11 for you? I mean, Martinez in goal, obviously. I think Matty Cash at right back. Luca Dean left back. Esri Concer and Paul Torres centre backs. Double pivot of. I would start Anana with Telemann uh, still and play Bailey on the right. John McGinn on the left. Morgan Rogers supporting John Duran, which would leave. Uh, who have we got on the bench then? Wait, Jacob John Duran. Did I say you John Duran? <laughs> yeah, you said, um, you said Rogers supporting John Duran. <laughs> <laughs> John Durant's on my mind. Uh, Ollie Watkins, sorry. Okay. Uh, John Durant will come off the bench and score a hat trick. There's yeah. this 30 embargoed story. Ollie Watkins injured. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> right, just to say that is not true. <laughs> no, Ollie Watkins up front, Rogers in support, Durant on the bench. Um, but yeah, it leaves with lots of nice options Barkley, yeah. uh, Ramsey. Who else? There's lots. There's lots to play with there. Um, it's a fully fit squad apart from Robin Olsen. So, 
Yeah, really looking forward to just seeing the bench. I mean, the starting eleven, will, I think, would just be good anyway. But then the bench will be really interesting to see, essentially, who he's left out, um, yeah. which sounds a bit negative. But yeah, no, it's just that those players are not necessarily as ready as the others. I would think would be more yeah. likely. Yeah, and you know, I don't know. Mings and Kamara may only travel with this squad, and they're just being around it potentially. Yeah, Emery will put them on the bench if they are ready to play because Torres picks up an injury or whatever it may be. Then Mings may be the one if he turns to. We don't know. Maybe it'll be Carlos. Um, but yeah, you've got to kind of prepare for every outcome, and the squad tomorrow will be an interesting, um, something interesting to look at at quarter to two. When it comes yeah. out. Yeah, lots of options back in the squad and, and exciting to be able to pick from all those different variations. But I suppose without knowing massive amounts about how many how much of these players have trained over the last couple of weeks in the international break, I wonder if there is that many options. Do you know what I mean? Like for the first yeah, eleven. Yeah, yeah, is it just yeah. like, well, the first eleven will pretty much be as it was because yes, Ananda's back, but he's he's barely trained, kind of thing. So mm. yeah, I, I don't know whether I'd go as far as to say like all these new players will be back in like McGinn on the left. I don't know. Is he ready? <laughs> don't, know. <laughs> yeah, don't know don't know either um, yeah I'm not sure too fair I said don't know Emery said that he's been training normally so he should be okay. ready no. yeah yeah. I said I don't know as if it's not my job to know these things uh, but Emery did say <laughs> you, said, you said I don't know but then actually told us that you do know <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> I was just trying to play along yeah Emery said he's trained normally so that would kind of inform us that he's ready yeah, to yeah. Okay. Part and Maybe he won't play 90 minutes. Maybe we don't need him to because you want to refresh the team after the 60 minutes. But uh, yeah, I'd expect McGinn to start and I'd expect Bailey to start. I'd expect Rodgers to start. Watkins, Tielemans will be starting. I think the only kind of question mark would be um, who plays alongside Tielemans and Anana mm. again, has trained. So yeah, I'm pretty confident with my 11 that that will be it. Okay. I was having a chat with Dan Bardell this afternoon about the following game before we started recording and you know, both kind of saying a good side, you know, Marco Silva, good manager, that kind of stuff, which they are. Um, I saw a stat, I think it was, from like, it was an XG thing, so you know, fast forward if you don't care about that kind of stuff. It's something like expected points, actually. I've uh, seen full, it. Myself, full, yeah. of a, full of a second, or should mm. be second, based off their expected points. So yeah. I've had a very good start to the season, or should have had a better start to the season than they have with the chances that they've created effectively. Mm. Yeah. Dan countered that with a stat. I don't have it in front of me word for word, but it was something like they've faced eight like bad chances or whatever. <laughs> no, nine, big, I think it big was. Chances. Big chances, nine big chances. You're saying bad chances. Bad chances, yeah. <laughs> Which is the, actually the exact opposite of what I'm trying to say. Bad chances, like, <laughs> yeah. Good chances, good. actually. You know, serious yeah. chances. Yeah. And I think they've conceded eight of the nine, which is like... They've only like faced that many shots, but they've all yeah. gone in. So maybe a bit unlucky in that sense. Mm. Just in terms of Fulham, I don't know how much you've watched of them. The kind of profile, the way they play, especially at home, would yeah. that impact like, that midfield role specifically is what I'm thinking of. Like, is it better to have Anana's physicality or like Barkley's kind of tempo, ticking, I control? I think in any away game, I want Anana to start because okay. the, the thing you have to win is your duels. You'll be under the cosh for a, at least half of the game, probably, no matter who you're playing, even against Leicester and, um, you know, West Ham, who aren't a brilliant side. You know, you're going to concede chances and you'll concede, uh, well, I say chances, also or just, just opportunities and the flow of the game. And I just think Onana, just even like the most basic thing, his reach <laughs> to win tackles is mm. uh, good. I, I'd rather have Barkley coming off the bench as well to make an impact. Uh, set pieces, again, really important for a for a player like Onana. And uh, yeah, I, I think Fulham are a very decent side, a side who will be in and around finishing in the top half. And you never know how far they're going to be away from finishing in Europe. They lost Palinja, but that hasn't affected them too much. I think Sasa Lukic is out, I think. And he um, has done well this season, more of a direct replacement than Palinja than other midfielders that they have. So that would be a, would you say that's a boost for Fulham? I'm not too sure. Um, but yeah, a good side. They have two good strikers as well. Jimenez appears to be playing like the Jimenez of old. He scored a really nice free kick in the international break and he's been doing well. They should have got something out of Man City. I really like the backup striker Munoz as well. But he's barely playing, which is a lot about their attacking options. They've got Adama Traore as well. So yeah, Anthony Robertson, they've signed Anderson, who I think pulled out of the Denmark squad. So that might be touch and go, to be fair, mm. which again would be a positive for Villa. Yeah. Um, but even if he is playing, you know, we are still... Uh, if, uh, Cash put, sorry, Cash uh, spoke in the week about how Villa are basically going up against every side, being the favourites to win, and that you know brings pressure. But you know, it's not wrong. We are going to all these places and kind of not expecting to win. But if you're going to put your money on any side to win, 
more often than not in the games that Villa play, it's Villa uh, that you yeah. put it on because we are <laughs> a top four side. So, yeah, I mean, I'll go on to my prediction shortly, but um, it'll be a tough game. I have no doubt about that. It, it very much was so uh, last year as well. It, it meant a lot to us that win at Fulham. You could tell yeah. in the way that Emery celebrated it after the match um, in the press conference as well, like a lot of relief, mainly because we had a couple of poor results before then. Uh, lost to Man United at home, lost Kamara to injury. Um, but yeah, Fulham are a good side and being at home as well should have been West Ham, which would have made it three wins out of three, but they considered like odds Danny Ings. So yeah, tough game. Yeah, I, in the prep for the Villa Social in a, in a roundabout way, I mean, if you watch the Villa Social, what I'm about to say has had no relevance whatsoever. But in the lead up to going to film today, I was watching some of the goals back from last year and Emery's time, and a lot, a lot of Watkins actually. Yeah. His two goals last year against Fulham, uh, basically the point I'm getting to of like, we could do, I'm not saying that Watkins isn't there yet, we could do with that version of Watkins back playing yeah. tomorrow. So I think if we do, we will yeah. get chances, he will score them, we win the game, simple as that. Yeah. Two very different finishes. I don't know how, how much you remember them. I remember them a lot, recently. Yeah. That first one where he doesn't really do anything, but just rolls rolls yeah. the shoulder and he's got space across his body across the goalkeeper lovely little finish and then the second one runs onto a ball and just leathers it two That's totally it. different styles but yeah. just that Watkins tomorrow please and I think we've got a great chance that second goal from Watkins and it might sound mad is one of the more memorable goals for me last season and that might sound crazy but as I just said then I kind of I felt what Emery felt in a way because we'd had some poor results we'd lost to Newcastle failed to beat Sheffield United lost to United twice yeah. it felt a bit like oh we really need to pick up, up pick up our form again because Champions League at that point was like a you know a goal but also are we really going to do it not sure um but yeah, that's when Watkins scored that second goal. It was like, oh my God, finally, we're going to like win uh, an away game, which we hadn't done in a little while. And it felt like a lot of pressure was lifted. Um, mm. But then we conceded straight after. And then Adama Traore has a one-on-one in the 93rd minute or something. Martinez bails us out. So we might not have won that game, but it was a huge win. And yeah, yeah Watkins' goals, similar like in the Luton match, again, Watkins' goals um, playing a crucial part. I mean, obviously 19 of them last season. Four goals in his last four league games. He's looking sharp. So hopefully, yeah, yeah a couple more goals tomorrow and we'd win the game, you'd, you'd like to think. Yeah. Okay, let's do our score prediction then. Quite a quick uh, episode this week, but as we said, we're short on time. So uh, hopefully right you appreciate that. Last time out predictions, we both went 2-1 victory over Man United. Sadly, that was a nil-nil, so no points there. Again, uh, the prediction league is level pegging still. We both, neither of us have got a spot-on prediction yet, but we've both got the correct outcome three times in the same games to beat beat Leicester, Everton and Wolves. Both of us sit on three points after the first uh, seven games, which is pretty rubbish, really, considering you could be on 21 and we got three. Uh, Okay, right. So, Fulham away. As we've said, difficult game. I think we all acknowledge that. However... I need to find some paper and a pen. <laughs> Dan's now going to go through all the stats next year to make sure his predictions <laughs> bank on. Still be wrong. Ready? Can I guess at what you've done? I feel like you've drawn a two there. I have. Yeah, just the way that you, you are moved. <laughs> wow, well, good knowledge. All right. Did you uh, work out the other number I did? If you did, I'll just flash it up. No, I could guess two one Villa would be my guess. Yeah, one two. Yeah, one two Villa. I still back us to win, as you said. I think if you're putting Villa down as I was going to put money on this. Who's the favourite? Doesn't really matter who it is, really. I don't, you know, I think Villa are the favourites for most games. Again, yeah, yeah. Back to the Villa Social, which comes out next week, where you were saying like, you know, there's there's few teams that you just go, they're just better than us. That's probably through Liverpool, Arsenal, Man City. After that, yeah, Chelsea maybe, Tottenham maybe, Newcastle maybe, but really, oh, yeah. Villa have shown enough to say that they should be the fourth best. And if I go up against Leicester, Wolves, Fulham, I'm going to back Villa by and large so mm. yes while well, it's a difficult place to go and Marco Silva's a good manager and they've got good attacking threats etc etc still back Villa to win if they're on form so 2-1 one all <laughs> after all of that <laughs> I was hoping you weren't going to ask me why don't you think we'll win That's, what's nah, second just, going but, for the win again the kind of this is I'm not like having a go at you here Dan but like <laughs> even the thought of like oh why aren't we going to win it was kind of a bit like full of a decent and they're good at home they beat Arsenal at home last season, should have maybe even beaten City before the international break. Like they're a good side, and I just think if we get a draw there... We did both of those okay. things. Hey? I, we did both of those things. Yeah, but we know it doesn't work like that. Um, <laughs> I don't know, I just... They've... Yeah, a good side, a good team, a team that may be going for European football, and we're going 
away from home, yeah, we're a good side and we can beat anyone on our day. But yeah, we've got players coming back from injury. Great. Will they be fully fit? Don't know. But um, yeah, just a draw. I, th- I think a draw is a fair result if I'm taking off my kind of biased hat. Obviously, okay, my yeah. heart my heart says 2-1 Villa like you. Um, but my head is telling me a draw. Okay, I'm going to end the show in a second with a prediction that I don't even really want to elaborate on because we don't have time. I'm just going to drop it out there and literally end the show. So before that, John, thank you for joining me as always. Thank you for watching or listening to this episode of Claret and Blue. You can get involved on YouTube by scrolling down to the comments section and sharing your thoughts and predictions ahead of the game as well. And whilst you're down there, you can find that NordVPN discount code as well. What I'm going to say, John, before I leave, is that we have Fulham, Bologna, Bournemouth and Palace in the next, what, 10 days, 12 days, four games, Premier League, Champions League, League Cup. I think we win all four. Oh, you've blown it already. <laughs> <laughs> <Say like that. laughs>